Polio, a crippling and potentially deadly infectious disease, which after invading the nervous system can cause paralysis. For many years, Nigeria was faced with this threat, which affected hundreds of children and even resulted to deaths. Records showed that in 2012, Nigeria had half of all the polio cases worldwide. There's been a drastic change from 2012. The government of Japan has been a faithful partner of Nigeria over 14 years and provided assistance in fight against polio since Japanese fiscal year 2000. Until now, remarkable progress has been made and Nigeria stands at a final stage in the fight. Aid project is aimed to fill in the final gap by means of loan aid for Nigeria to be able to win the upcoming last fight. The amount of this loan aid is 8 million, 8 trillion, 285 million Japanese yen, which is approximately equivalent to 85 million US dollars. The preferential interest rate of 0.2% is applied. The funds provided will be utilized for procurement of polio vaccines for children under five years of five, uh, five years of age. This Japanese loan aid is part of the international support to the National Polio Eradication Program. It will serve as a guarantee for the procurement of the vaccines for polio campaigns by UNICEF. This, of course, would ensure timely delivery and availability of polio vaccines for the national polio immunization campaigns. In 2014, Nigeria borrowed $85 million from Japan to fund its fight against polio. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has agreed to repay the loan after Nigeria met the condition of achieving more than 80% vaccination coverage in at least one round each year in very high-risk areas across 80% of the country's local government areas. And that's according to Quartz. In Nigeria, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation work with government, the private sector, and civil society groups to help people out of poverty by giving the opportunity to live healthy and productive lives. With over 100 grants, the foundation works in Nigeria to achieve six main goals. Eradicate polio by working with the World Health Organization and UNICEF, as well as the National Primary Health Care Development Agency and state governments to ensure regular vaccinations and immunizations. To improve family health through the reduction in preventable deaths by focusing on maternal and child health, including common health care challenges such as pneumonia, diarrhea, neglected tropical diseases, as well as access to clean water and proper sanitation and hygiene. To improve nutrition by partnering with the Dangote Foundation and others to address severe malnutrition and improve overall childhood nutrition. To increase agricultural productivity by providing farmers with better tools, seeds and systems, and also by supporting research and policies that will help improve the lives of smallholder farmers over the long term. And also to enhance access to financial services. Shall we rise to welcome His Excellency the Vice President? The National Economic Council, established and backed by the Constitution, concerns itself with the economic affairs of the Federation and provides measures necessary for the coordination of economic efforts and programs. The NEC, led by the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshimbaju, this time is a special one with special attendance. 
royal fathers, ministers, lawmakers, governors, development partners, notable Nigerians, For and a special guest, Mr. Bill Gates. Made, uh, at this stage. The expanded National Economic Council focuses on the important role of human capital development in addressing issues of poverty alleviation and inclusive growth. Development partners like the DFID and the World Bank representatives in the expanded session of the National Your Economic Council Vice insist President that the most valuable asset Governor's a country Vice has is its people. Investing in human capital offers impressive rates of return. Some of these are much greater than other types of investment. For example, we know that here in Nigeria, the average return of an additional year of schooling is 10%. We know that investing every dollar in vaccines and vaccinations results in a, in a return of $23. We know that investing a dollar in nutrition provides economic returns of $16. So my argument here today is that Nigeria cannot afford not to invest in human capital for its long-term growth, for its long-term prosperity. A healthy, well-nourished and well-educated population with the skills to access jobs and improve livelihoods is a fundamental building block of economic success. With the rise in population figure and even future prediction of Nigeria becoming the third most populous nation by 2050, there are fears that without a healthy and educated workforce, development and growth will be impeded. More than half of Nigeria's population lives below the poverty line, which is one third of the sub Saharan poor population and over one -tenth, tenth of the global poverty headcount ratio. In addition, a prosperous and stable Nigeria also means a large market for goods, services, and knowledge for the region and for many smaller countries in West Africa in particular. Many of us here in this room would agree that Nigeria's biggest asset is not its oil, but its people. But for Nigeria to capitalize on its youth, which represent more than half of its population, significant investment must be made in human capital. Currently, the country is daily witnessing more deaths from the outbreak of Lassa fever in some states. Analysts' breakdown of the current health budget indicates that Nigeria will spend 1,688 naira on the health care of each citizen in the year in the face of numerous health issues in the country.